What's up, Sassy Gamers, and welcome to Got Our Attention Podcast. This is Season 3, Episode 8. I'm your host, Zycia, or Mike, uh, alongside uh, Brian, Bruno, and Kelly. Yo. Shout out to all three of you guys for joining today and putting up with my nonsense. I appreciate that. I mean, we're here for you. We've been putting up with it for years. Why would we change that now? <laughs> I mean, you know, True sometimes people story. have change of heart. Actually. They decide to, to move mm-hmm. on, I guess. At this I've point, not- I've invested so much time and energy. I feel like <laughs> pulling away would just be a waste of the last four years of misery. Yeah. Listen, pull it, point out is not <laughs> a viable know. option. <laughs> Um, also, I mean, I'm not now. and that never have been, been here. The news. This is definitely I've, the time you want to pull. Is that banned now too? Damn, they got everything. <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, I'm not here for Zycia. I've never been here for Zycia. I'm here with Zycia for the audience. So, <laughs> I'm, I'm here for here Zycia. Today. How does that feel? I'm here oh, for Deidre because this is her favorite time of the year. It it's, is. It's Halloween season. Oh, I thought it was yeah. Christmas. And I believe that yeah, started June 1st. You thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> right? Mid-season, exactly. So, yeah. Can so, I get w- Kelly to murder me through the monitor? <laughs> Tune in next possibly. time. Possibly. I mean, that'd make that, a good movie. I mean, I do enjoy a What's your favorite movie. Halloween song? Jingle Bells? <laughs> Christmas Rock? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? Um, no. Wait. Definitely Maybe no. it's cold outside. Dwayne Johnson made a Christmas song? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he has. He's a very talented individual. <laughs> I mean, enjoy I'm, your I'm game. Dip singing Moana. So, <clears throat> I know Halloween did. is not. And it, his, his daughter will not believe it. That's the That's true. Part. That's true. That's true. Yes. Mike's she like, I've been trying to finish Maui. this intro yeah, for like 10 years. Like every time. By the time we let him finish, it will in fact be Christmas. So I'll be right. I mean, Mike yeah. not finishing his history repeating himself. <laughs> okay. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> no, I'll just say, so Halloween isn't my favorite time of the year for sure. Definitely not. Uh, but I do enjoy this time uh, because there's something that we've been person. doing for the last two years, this will be our third year. And it's a thing called Shocktober. And it's something that we started just kind of on the whim, just I decided to do this because it was for a good cause. And, and I'll explain uh, basically every year now, uh, third year going uh, starting now is uh, we raise money for a charity called Able Gamers Charity, uh, which help uh, individuals that are disabled to be able to play uh, different video games or whatever through different mediums if like they can't hold a controller they they modify things for that to happen or if if it's just like you know whatever it may be that could be hindering them from being able to play like most of us uh they they help those people do that so to me it's been a really great cause i really liked able gamers Um, i actually got a chance to meet uh, some of their staff at pax east this year and uh, that was really awesome um, so shout out to you guys. Uh, they apparently recognize this uh, from the logo, at least uh, from from last year from helping out. So that was pretty neat. Got to talk to them for a little bit and do some things. And it was really from cool. Sassafras. So, they recognized us from Sassafras. The name I don't of think our that's fish. His name. Well, yeah, is that, it is. I, I, decided I, I decided it. I, I decided it. <laughs> and I think that it's. All right. Fine. I mean, do I do I hear a nay? I like dope fish. <laughs> okay. Don't I like turtles. Uh, anyway, so so October, uh, it does mean a lot to me. With so the reason why we raise or how we raise money is I actually play scary games, and if you don't know me, I'll let you know now. I hate scary games. I don't like them. I don't. I've never liked them. Uh, I've always been a, a backseat driver when it comes to scary games. I'd rather watch someone else kind of play them, and I just kind of take it in and turn around when I need to. Uh, but the last three, two years now going on three, I've forced, I've been forcing, and then they've kind of forced me to as well, but, uh, to play scary games, to, to help raise money in the sense of, you know, people watching, donating to, to able gamers. Uh, so we're starting again this year. Uh, and actually as of tonight, uh, we'll be starting our first one. So if you're watching this live on YouTube, uh, right now, then tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to start on our uh, Twitch channel. Uh, you can tune into YouTube. You can watch it. Uh, but if you want to interact with the chat, you'll have to go to the Twitch chat to, to be able to interact. But um, either way, you'll be able to donate uh, anytime that you want to. We'll be putting the links in the chat so you guys can watch that. But uh, it's been very interesting. The first year I selected the games, uh, we actually only had three of us at that time. And uh, we, we added Day Drinker afterwards. And mm-hmm. uh, and after the first year, it was like, well, those games, and, and I'll be honest, the first year, the games weren't 
as scary as I intended them to be. Uh, I don't know if that was yeah. subconsciously or what, but it just happened think, to work I, out that I, way. I, I, I like think the it was alien conscious. ice. Yeah, yeah, alien isolation. It just wasn't mm-hmm. scary. Like I heard a lot of things like, oh, it's like this, yeah. you know, thriller scary game, and it just didn't come out that way. But uh, so the next year, so last year, uh, Daydrinker took the reins and said, "Hey, I'm going to pick the games <laughs> for you." And I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool. What games?" And she's like, uh-huh. and, and, and Brian, Brian helped. Brian, Brian, Brian picked some of the games too. Oh, well, yeah, pick he picked one. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but Which was more of a psychological horror because that one was rough. That was. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. It's like something about a kid basically growing up yeah, in a broken that was, home. And, yeah, yeah like you played the little kid that had the really creepy, sus-ass stuffed mm-hmm. animal that was like, the teddy squeeze bear. me harder and I'll yeah. make things yeah. bright and happy around you. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. yeah I got a horror really game for you to play this year. Um, I've actually played it already and reviewed it. It's called Disney's Tangled. <laughs> oh <my God>. So <laughs> It's a kind of so horror anyway, game. We'll uh, we'll be starting that off tonight, sure. 9 p.m. Okay. Eastern. So join us again on our channel to help out. Uh, like I said, any donation is great. Um, you know, if you can't donate, that's totally fine. Just hang out, you know, interact with chat and watch me cry, yeah. essentially. Literally uh, this year, a dollar, a dollar goes a long way for this. Charity. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, donate as to much as we want. And, and the other yeah. thing to point out is all of our proceeds, 100 percent of the proceeds go mm-hmm. to Able Gamers. We don't touch any of that. It's actually interacted yeah. through a different website. Uh, Tiltify that helps out with all that exchange. So, like, we literally don't see a dollar of it. Like, it doesn't come to our pockets, and we're going to pay it out later. Like, it just yeah. it goes straight to them, uh, which is also easy for us because we don't have to like do anything to to worry about. So, um, but anyway, yeah, that's that's basically kicks off our season. Um, I only know the first game, which tonight we're playing at Dead of Night. Uh, yeah. I've seen this game a little bit, but I've never played it, and uh, I'm not necessarily happy about it. But we'll see how it goes. <laughs> So, so, yeah, so at Dead of Night um, is a game that I've played and that uh, one of my uh, very good friends has played. And it's a lot of jump scares. And it's you're basically in this hotel where perfect. this well, <laughs> it's awesome. This hotel where this I, I, he's the maintenance man, Jimmy, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, he's the front door guy. He's like the bell yeah. up or whatever. Or the Oh, he's like the, the night manager, I guess, or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It's and your character is like leaving this festival, and your friends. I can't remember exactly what happens, but like, like somehow leave you. And if you've ever been to a festival, <laughs> you your friends are you've got some shitty fucking friends if they're just fucking yeah, leaving you. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Lord knows what what situation is going on in your head. Um, so, but, so you go to this hotel and. You have to find these keys, but Jimmy is basically coming out after you with an axe. And I will tell you, oh, every great. time I play this game, uh, I it doesn't matter how many times Jimmy starts coming after me, I get scared every single time. You still have the same like visceral right. reaction, like like innate, like oh god, oh god, is he gonna find me? And then you you find yourself literally not breathing because you're hiding in a closet, even though Jimmy can't actually hear you. So, yeah, it's it's a good game. I'm actually well, really looking forward. So, to it. that's the first game. I don't know anything else. Uh, they never tell me until the week of, just because we have to publish it on on the social media. But uh, I'm sure it's, they've got three other games lined up. I, I will say there's three games lined up. The fourth I do know about. Um, and that kind of rolls into our goal this year is to raise a thousand dollars. Last year we raised eight hundred and eighty one dollars and thirty nine cents. So thanks to all of you that did help out with that uh, and those that are going to help out this year. That's super awesome. We really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, the goal is a thousand this year. And uh, one of the things that we haven't announced yet, which we will in the next upcoming week, probably by the next podcast, you'll definitely know. Uh, but we're going to do a special finale. Uh, which will have more details to come. Uh, but just know that it should be exciting and fun, and uh, I can't wait for that as well. So uh, we'll we'll announce that more as time comes on. But yeah. so, so that's October. So that's kind of exciting at the same time, nerve-wracking for me. But yeah. <laughs> One of my very favorite um, uh, moments or, or, or I guess it, it wasn't a moment. So Mike played a game I picked called 
summer of 58. And I had played the game and I was on a, a, a Discord video chat with uh, Phoenix and Demir. And we were, Mike w- wasn't on for whatever reason. And I was coming to the end of this game and I was literally freaking out. And I think at one point, Bruno was like, what, is everything okay? And I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm finishing this game. I'm almost done. Like it's, um, it, it, it's so scary. It was a great game. Lots of like jump scares, which Mike hates, but it, 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 please, if you get a chance, uh, Brian put together an amazing montage of, uh, <laughs> the, all the, the moments that kind of were super creepy. There's this bunny in the, uh, I was almost called it a movie in the game and he, you kind of keep encountering him and Mike's reaction to the bunny when we was like, Oh, hello. Wait, were you there before? And so it, it, it's a, a fantastic montage. It, it's actually up on our YouTube. So if you get it, if you like it, get a chance. Yeah. Uh, we'll put it up there. <laughs> it yeah. Up I there. will say, uh, the games that were picked last year, I did enjoy the stories of them. They were all really well done stories that kind of lead you through this this yeah. you know start to end kind of thing. Uh, it's not just about you know a bunch of jump scares and like Dead by Daylight, just hack and slash. Like it's literally a story, and, and that part was great. The, the creepy part, not so much. But uh, yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, there was um, there was one that you either went past the ending point or we ended it. And then you kept playing it until you finished it that night. It was one or the other. Yeah, I think we were going to end the stream early because of the time that we typically did. I think I went on. I think that was the game you're talking about, the one that we, the kid the kid one. Um, I don't remember the name of that game. I thought but the kid the one kid was one. fast. I can't remember if it was Martha is Dead or. or no, I didn't was, play that. Wasn't Martha's no. Dead. Um, one of them. Uh, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Put it in the description below, I'm sure. Oh. Uh, yeah. So I, I, I kind of wanted to. I suspect there's going to be some this year that you won't finish. I mean, probably. Um, you think so? But yeah. So yeah, I kind of wanted to bring up just because I think some of the, the ones time. are going to be yeah. longer. So I wanted to bring up some of the points of the scary stuff because as a kid, as I mentioned earlier, like I like the backseat drive, right? And and as a kid, I remember watching my older brother play Resident Evil Two. And he played Resident Evil one. I wasn't really there for that. Um, like to the point where he was like, cause this is before like, you know, really using the internet and stuff. He had to like draw out a map and there was no maps available. So he had to draw everything out on grid paper and it was crazy. But, uh, so Resident Evil two came out and he was like, I'm going to play this. You want to watch it? I'm like, sure. I'm like probably five or six. I don't know. Not very old. Um, whatever age I would be at that time the game was released. But, uh, I remember like watching him play a little bit of it. And, and just like Resident Evil, it's always like a puzzle game, too. So there's there's things to solve. It's not just about like jump scares or anything. Um, I, actually, I think he may have let me play it first. But I, I remember specifically the part. And this always is like the moment of like when people ask me about scary games and stuff. And I'm like, this is that moment is uh, I'm playing the very beginning. And it's when you come around the corner and you see yourself at the end of the hallway. And um, you see like as you get closer to the the camera basically you're walking towards there's like blood dripping from the ceiling and i'm like mm-hmm. nope nope yes, nope yes. and i'm like i keep going and then like more blood more blood and then finally he gets to the cutscene where it shows like that liquor for the first time like hanging from the ceiling and he's like all nasty and, and i was like yep i'm done <laughs> I, turned off the, yeah. I was like i just turned the game off i was like i'm good and uh, Did, so i actually watched him play through that game and it was it was scary <laughs> What's even better? Um, uh, well, I, go and look up some of the out of bounds uh, like videos of that. There's some really cool stuff with the out of bounds. Oh, really? Video that, like, there's like, uh, it was either that scene or another scene close to it where there was some unused assets that are still stuck up there that that they didn't end up using visually in the game, uh, which is really cool because it what makes that game really part of its time and interesting is uh, what Mike said that might confuse some people that have not played that game, which is that the characters at the end of the hallway and coming towards the camera, because 
almost all of that game was like these fixed cameras. Mm -hmm. uh, And you would move around in a room uh, usually with tank controls too, which is you move forward and you can rotate and you can move forward again. And when you went off the screen, (laughs) when you went off the screen, you were in view of another camera basically. So it was very interesting that you were like, kind of moving this character around on the screen, not the typical first person or third person view that we're used to. Yeah. Like it's, it's uh, it was it's almost, almost set second up second person view. Yeah. It was almost set up like a movie. So like you'd have these long, like the long hallway shot from a distance and you see the person. But the problem with that, like you said, the controlling is if you were to hit a certain like corner where like the camera's over here and it swaps to this one. If you're moving in that direction and the camera swaps, then the direction you're moving is now different. And your character starts like freaking because you're trying to go one way and the character is yes. like trying to do the other way. <laughs> and, you're, and then this is like usually when you're getting attacked or something. So you're trying to run and it's like just a mess. But um, I would say some of the, the most fun memories. But at the same time, like I said, I, I'd literally noped out and watched him play the rest of the game because I was done. <laughs> um, but you know, lately, I would say probably my favorite moment so far from Shocktober. Um, well, outside of the fact that Kelly literally snuck into my house and tried <laughs> to scare the shit out of me live yeah. on stream, uh, which was also what you say that to make sure for. to check that yeah. out. But I, I uh, did. I succeeded. Oh, yeah. Um, but no, the other part, I think, and I don't even know if this was on Shocktober or not, but it was definitely Phasmophobia. And it was that time. And I still talk about this because it was that damn time in the high school where uh, I was in the locker room. And I think I like look to the left or something. And it was like right here. It was like right next to me. And like, <laughs> and it made the noise and I freaked out. Like I literally, and that's probably one of the reasons why I don't like to play that game anymore. <laughs> like that one shook me. Like I was done. Like I did not want to play that. Anymore. That was amazing. <laughs> oh my God. So. The funniest thing is he was still so much in gamer mode instead of real life. Just being like, <laughs> you know, he stayed there and he moved his character and he ran his character away because he was still a hundred percent in gamer mode. Oh yeah. I left. I went back to the van. So oh my anyway, God. that's yeah. my, my moments. Do you guys have any Halloween or horror game moments that stand out to you guys or favorite horror game or something? Well, so I will, uh, and I hate to be dominating this. I'm sorry. Um, Brian, I'm going to let you go this. next, but I'm, I'm going to let, let you, you I'm going to let you have your moment. I'm going to let you finish, but, Good, Kanye. um, so a couple of the games that uh, Mike played last year had some affiliation with Amika Games, which is a developer. Amika mm-hmm. and Ask, they're two different developers. They they do a lot of stuff together. Uh, and I think Summer 58 may have been an Amika game. I think it may have been an Ask game. They were all like the same. They're all, the same yeah, they're all related. Yeah. yeah. And they're all in the same region. And uh, a game that I wanted – Mike to play this year. Okay. Yeah. I wanted Mike to play this year was uh father's day because it's a, from the same developer. It's from Amika games, but it's coming out the Saturday, the last Saturday mm-hmm. of unfortunately. Um, yeah. Of, but uh, I mean, Hey, if it's out next year, you know, it's good. Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. It's, so, so I'll be playing it this year and Mike will be playing it next year. Yeah. Now, uh, so, also yeah. a fun little factoid is that Summer of 58 was in Amica, mm. uh, was also in the news back then because that was one of the developers that quit <clears throat> because he had made multiple small games like that that oh, were that's right. <sighs> able to be done in a short amount of time, which worked mm-hmm. well with Shocktober. Mike, because Mike could complete a whole game. And he was extremely frustrated about the whole return it on steam. Mm. If you had played it for less than uh, like two three hours, hours or three which, hours, yeah. which this was a 90 minute game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, whether, whether it was that individual developer or, uh, or not, I mean, I think, Amika I think, I, I, I think you're games. right. No, I, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I think you're absolutely right. Uh, See, don't be a jerk. Yeah, like, it was just, a single developer yeah. studio. Pay for the game, keep mm-hmm. it, and support the developers. I mean, that's yeah, that's part of the whole process here. Like, yeah. well, that's been a founding thing that we've said at SAS is like, yeah. even when we meet people, developers, and we talk to them about their game, like we have interviews. They're like, "Here's a key." We're like, "No, don't." Like, we we want to pay for them you. because, like, yeah. obviously, you know, yeah. <laughs> you're working and have to make money. So, yeah. and most yeah. of these games aren't expensive. I, you know, yeah. I think 
like, every game that I bought for Mike last year was worth every fucking penny, first of all, and they were yep. all under 10 bucks. Hilariously wow, enough, really? I feel like the more you pay for a horror game these days, the less scary it is. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, all the AAA so titles in, are yeah. like, oh, well, you know, mm-hmm. we're going to charge $60 for this, so we need to make it so that everybody wants to buy it. And it's like, okay, so it's not a horror game anymore. It's an action like shooter game. They're like, yeah. No, uh, it's it's horror. It's like, yeah, yeah. maybe a thriller game. I'm like, Resident Evil's horror. And I'm like, no, it's not. That's no. literally just an action an game. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what yeah, you're talking about. It's action survival. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I played Resident Evil 7 and it was, it was fun. It was definitely had some jump scares, but like you said, it's more, at that point, more of an action game because it's and, like, you know, you're running around with a gun. Like, yeah. it's horror like games a, are such a miss for me because jump scares don't generally affect me. So I'm just like, very disinterested and like if i'm playing any kind of spooky game i end up just like like a phasmophobia i just end up like having an altercation with the ghost i'm like come out here you little bitch i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna show you my crucifix and they're just like they just like jump out i'm like oh no haha picture i died we won the game yeah and i'm sitting here like cowering in the van like are you guys alive still like is everybody okay you know what's amusing though is for the first time in a long time, I actually got scared multiple times in a game, and it what? was playing Grounded. Grounded has scared me on multiple occasions because really? it's it's weird. It's marked as a horror game. Okay, Is it really? Know. Yeah. And um, I can see that, like the spider sense kind of stuff. The, the, the spiders and and a lot of the monsters that kind of just burrow under the ground and just appear to know were like tremors creatures. Um, but for me, it's the game has like moments of peace in it oh i oh i i wanted to play this okay, and yeah. i've been playing a lot of it and i'll talk more about it later but for the topic of scaring the crap out of me um a lot of times i'll be like base building and things will be really chill in the area that i'm building my base and there was one specific time where i was just hanging out building the base there's like these little ticks but whenever they in- engage on you they make like like the, uh, their theme song plays essentially and it's like this cutesy stupid little theme song and they almost sound like they're cackling at you um, or like giggling at you as they're trying to beat you up, oh my God. which is hilarious. <laughs> and um, there was this one point where like I had like this glitched mob or something that was in combat with me. So I was playing the normal combat music and I was like, yeah, whatever. This went on for like 15 minutes, nothing happening, just me base building. And then all of a sudden my character gets like thrown like 15 feet forward and this spider, this full-grown wolf spider that, like, is towering over my whole base, essentially, just, like, slams on top of me when it's, like, there's nothing happening. It just, like, leapt over the grass and started beating the ever-living shit out of me. And I was just like, what the fuck is this thing doing here? I'm, like, sitting there with, like, an axe chopping grass, and suddenly there was a wolf spider beating my ass. I died, unfortunately. It, it took my life. And then it sat outside of my base, like, taunting me. And I That's swear the, the, worst. the voice recording for those spiders, they took like a human making some weird noise, like saying something maybe in like oh. a growling tone. And then they must have like just put some kind of filter over it until it just sounds like the creepiest, like guttural speech oh. in existence. So they just show up and you just hear like this weird like <laughs> sound. <laughs> and you're just yes! like, what? Yes! <laughs> Or, or bring um, up as an old person. Yeah. And then another time, I just I had no torch left. I walked in this big cave, and I didn't look like there was anything in there. A whole ass black widow was like above me. Like I walked in, and I was like, I don't see any. Ah, oh, <laughs> sh- <laughs> shit! I'm gonna have yep. to rearrange the you window here. But uh, like I, I, I tell you, it, it has been. It has been quite a while since we touched grounded. It finally has fully released. Yeah. And Oh, I've touched it. And <laughs> it's it's kind of the game that's right up Mike's alley because like you collect mm-hmm. shit, you yeah. you chop down wood, you you build stuff. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'll get into back. all that and you get scared. <laughs> and and you have to survive in the the wilderness, although in this case the wilderness is your backyard and you're your honey, I shrunk my somebody shrunk my ass <laughs> and the rest of me, too. <laughs> oh, man. So, so it's totally along a with we like it needs to be touched again. I'll say along with spooky stuff, there's also another part that we always add in into the Halloween sense mm. is because 
we always have Kelly's corner, but since this is kind of yeah. Kelly's Super Bowl, that's like yeah. sports ball. It's like a thing that people just in case. I know you're not very into sports, but <laughs> is that is um, that is that is that is that what it is? <laughs> it's uh, was trying to be funny. <laughs> it's so we have Kelly's creepy corner. Cue the music. We should even get a different music for like a spooky music, but spookier. <laughs> anyway, tell us what you got in your creepy corner this this week. Well, so my creepy corner, uh, I, I ran into one creepy house listing, listing, and I was like, oh, that could be a Kelly's creepy corner. And then I was like, that's small, like that's not gonna be long enough. And then I ran into another one. And it just made my day. Are you like driving to these? Are you like, no, they are too far away. Okay. No, no. Well, well, are you just driving around like, Ooh, that looks like a creepy house. I guess I'll look at that one. One of, one of them is it within very close driving distance. Um, the other, not so much. Um, so Brian, who's my favorite, who are my, I guess I should say my top, two favorite horror movie characters. Well, I mean, Michael Myers, certainly. Hi, buddy. Somebody from Paw Patrol probably is the second one. (laughs) Uh, I mean, I don't know the second one as well, but maybe Jason Voorhees. It is, yes. So I I ask, I I know Brian gets me. He, he, He gets me. We are kindred spirits. He's in my head a lot. He knows this. And when I saw that somebody had listed a house in New Hampshire. We are New Hampshire specifically where they had the, one of the owners dress up like Michael fucking Myers and pose in every single one of this house's listings photos. I died. I was like, Oh my God. This is amazing. I, I I follow like random realtors because not because I'm trying to buy a house, but uh, because we, I just think this this stuff is funny. Okay, so yeah. uh, we will be losing her every summer now, and she'll have summer. a summer home in the north. Yes, uh, so winter it, home, of course, will be down here. Yeah, I, I, so I will. Uh, Sass Gaming will uh, send a link to the the listing, but super cute. It's super oh, cute in my. I, I do have a link there, Brian. If you want to show some, you want to show the listing on the podcast, but um, yeah, I can send it to you too if you need to. Super totally cute. So, like, like we should just pool our money, and this will be in our new studio. Yeah. So it's a very quaint house. I, there every weekend. I love Mike's face yeah. when I say he's like, like this. He's he's like processing it going like, how the hell is it going to work? Like, that's a hell of a drive. He goes, yeah. is Brian insane? <laughs> yes, Brian is yes, insane. Right, you already totally. know this. So just yeah. to clarify, is it just that somebody dressed up in the background yes. or is it actually haunted? No, it so to you my know, knowledge, we need to get a haunted, not, haunted house to, yeah. to do podcast in. To that's well, yeah, but then oh, Mike would never oh. freaking be in there because like yeah, jump scares are one thing, remote. zombies he has no <laughs> fear of, like <laughs> zombies and creatures running around, he doesn't care hunting. about. It's the creepy, like, like breathful, like voice in the oh, background. See. When I went to that wedding and in like, Portland, that like the baby crying that he can just barely hear that's yeah. down the hallway. It's and perfect. It's like, that's not my baby. Like that's the shit that freaks him out. Oh mm-hmm. man, see that, that's the I thing. Was, those houses were so cool. When I went to that wedding in Portland, there was we stayed in a house that was an old on an old military base, and the stories were it's it's like literally been on a bunch of different haunted house shows, and we stayed in the attic floor essentially, yep. in this room nice. that had. We, we slept in there with another friend of ours who was in another bed, and there was this little dark cubby that had no lights in it that was filled with dolls. Nice. And oh, I was laying down, yes! the moonlight was coming through the window and perfectly catching all of their eyes, and it was the most hilariously creepy shit <laughs> I have yeah. ever slept in for the most part. Like, and like I was just seriously, like, if you want to recreate that, oh you God, can just come this. over damn near any night and you can just sleep on my bed because that is what my wife has put on my side of the room. 
I don't mind the dolls. Oh, but Savannah did do these little baby figures, these kitschy baby figures. But the thing is, they were sitting on a shelf above our bed. But then we have a mirror on the other side from her, like, uh, what do they call those things? Vanity. For, from her vanity. And, like, that means that when you're laying in bed, the cell phone light was just enough light to where you could see the little baby eyes looking at you. And I was like, <laughs> that actually has to go because it's a little too <laughs> weird for me to have a bunch of creepy vintage babies staring me down when I'm laying in bed. But from, like, I can see my head and then the babies are above me and their eyes are looking down. Like, nope. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I don't see how you guys, like, like all that. Like, that's just... Oh, my God, I love I that. don't like it. I'm indifferent This guy to it. scares me all the time and I love it. I, like, I... I, I You're I, a repairman? I like to... My what? You're a repairman? Yes, That's man. a repair guy, right? <laughs> You're a mechanic. I, yeah. Yeah. That would scare me too. Mechanics are really expensive. Yeah, he's holding yeah, the light right true. now. For... <laughs> Kelly's like, I'll yeah, kill you. Yeah. I'll kill you for him. I swear. I will actually come there and murder you for I Michael will Myers. Tonight. Don't worry. I got this, honey. Hold on. <laughs> I got Dwayne to protect me. <laughs> Just a video oh of you showing up with one cardboard cutout and me putting Dwayne in front of it. <laughs> you need to get your husband to come in one time and just stand there and then move. And we're like, oh crap, that's not actually a cardboard cutout. That's a great idea. Oh, oh, all these ideas of man. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this listing is in Weir, New Hampshire. And like I said, the, the uh, listing agent was like, you know, let's do something to, you know, kind of catch people's attention. And he was like, I mean, tis the season. That's a not a direct quote. That's me paraphrasing. Because it's Christmas. Gotcha. Because it is, yes. Because uh, it is <laughs> the season. And so he's like, tis yeah, the season. Like what about, you know, like posing Michael Myers? And the <laughs> the owner of the house, the the husband was like, oh, pick me. So he's actually the one that's dressed up. And it's like the most fun, like, where's Waldo? I like, like how it's subtle in some of these. It is. Oh, God, yeah. Like, he's oh, in this super one. subtle. Yeah. yeah I see Wait till you get to the chickens. They had chickens. They have, they have, yep, there is that, again. Is that's, well? Now, that one's good. That yeah. one's real good. Yeah. It might be hard to see that he's in the little well in the well yeah it's cute oh keep going so that one again. by the shed yeah yeah that's in the tree house yeah yeah I, I had a tree house like that when i was a kid <laughs> down below the deck yeah. <laughs> like this is the way to sell this house it is isn't it it looks like a lovely house especially since the house need like it needs some work Mm-hmm. So that's my favorite one. He's got the chicken. I love it's actually kind of interesting because, like, the all you're doing is looking for him rather than looking at the house. Ball. Yes. Yep. 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 But he gets he a comes, lot of traction to the house, right? He comes with the house. And See, he's, he's, in, in, right he's in the window. Yeah. <laughs> he does. This one. Okay. The next that's one's going to be really good. That's that's good because yeah. th- because they have the decor. Of the time of the movie, yes, like this yeah, could have been that's slightly true. better that's true. if they added a little bit more detail and he had the doorknob turned just ever so slightly down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> true, true, true. This one I love him getting nice. the knife this is, this is out before of he did all the killing. Like he's yes, he's still pretty new. Yeah, <laughs> it's just. And, who has a house and I love how the knife so. is missing from the back counter. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like the splash. <laughs> the one. Yeah. yeah. And there's there's one of it when he poses on the bed that's really adorable. <laughs> I'm I'm a fan of this. Yeah. Oh, on the couch. Yeah. No, yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> Some of them are just <laughs> I actually like that one. That's hilarious. <laughs> This one yeah. too. Is another <laughs> that one's pretty good in the girls' room. Yeah. And sorry to those of you who are just listening to this podcast. You'll have to actually watch it. And then, yeah. So that 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 that's the PSC resistance. So. Yeah. Um, the, the 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 little teen girl pose. Yeah. With the legs kicked up behind you as mm-hmm. you're on your stomach on the bed and your chin is on your hands. Yeah, that's that's a yeah. good classic pose. Opening. Yeah. So what scares me in this shot of this down 
this downstairs unfinished basement mm-hmm. kind of put it does have like, a bar. make makeshift bar area mm-hmm. is the fact okay. that he's opening a bottle of Jägermeister. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's scarier to me than Oh my god, I had my <laughs> fill of that in college. Yeah. <laughs> That's I'm sure you you got I, filled up and then you, you became unfilled in college. Yes, okay, it, okay, it this is getting too TMI. Times. Multiple We're times, yeah. yeah. So surprised I'll, they didn't put well, like more jumpers of his in the dryer. That would have been. No, that's a, a great nice idea. Touch. Yeah, he only has the one actually. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think he changes his clothes. <laughs> that's true. That's true. So, yeah, so was, if you are interested in this house, if you live in New Hampshire. I think this one is actually still available. But the other one that I have is in Georgia. No. Uh, I think most of you know, or maybe you don't, maybe it's just a thing that we know because we live in Georgia, but Stranger Things is mostly filmed in Georgia, uh, just outside of Atlanta, suburbs of Atlanta. And the home that was used for uh, the 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 main house in Stranger Things it's, is actually up for Will's sale. Will's house. Will's house. And the uh, realtor slash in, the realtor and the uh, owner put up some pretty amazing pictures where you can see uh, the house and then the house in the upside down. They just you know did an overlay. Anything to sell. Anything to sell. It, it, so the house was up for sale for three hundred thousand dollars. There, they still had the uh, alphabet with the uh, Christmas, lights Christmas lights up, so that you know we'll communicate from the upside down. And it, you'll see that it's they made a little. They did, the show made it look a little more dilapidated, but it is one hundred percent a fixer upper. <laughs> We're in those dogs. 100% a fixer up. Like, Savannah like walked in holding a vacuum while we're recording and goes, can I use this? <laughs> I'm like, no, nah, no, fam. No, nah. no, no, no. I mean, good. Can I send Michael, send Michael over here right now. I will. I actually, I, I mean, I'll do you a favor. So that one is up for sale. Uh, rumor on the street though, is that somebody bought it for twice the asking price and they plan to open uh, to to make it an Airbnb, yeah. So if uh, it, uh, we will post that uh, listing on uh, on uh, Twitter as well, so that you can they, see uh, the really cool money. pictures. They did they did do a really great job. There is one um, picture of the fireplace from the inside of the house and it looks like a normal fireplace, but then the upside down picture looks like it's got, you know, something from the upside down. I would just want all of the blue paintings around of all the, like the tunnels, like that episode where they have, Uh, Ah, yeah, I would want all of that there. If I stayed there, it would have, the whole house would have to be covered in like blue sketches everywhere. (laughs) Hey, maybe, maybe uh, we can hook up with that. So cool. Well, yeah. that takes care of our first half. Thanks for checking it out. Give us a few minutes. Listen to our sponsors. And we're going to come back and talk about some upcoming games. And we're back. Welcome back, everyone. I'm glad that we're back. <laughs> oh, thanks, Phoenix, for that lovely slurping sound oh wait that was day drinker i can't believe it I, I that almost sounds like it did a sound effect too that was so we're gonna talk about some games uh awesome. there's don't worry of, i've got a backup not necessarily what we've been playing <laughs> I thought you know, I uh, thought that was your sidecar some side of us been backup. playing also some of the upcoming stuff because there's a couple upcoming. things that upcoming yes, upcoming or, chemistry hey whatever uh, so Phoenix, I'm gonna let you start. You got one listed here. Uh, tell us about it. Well, I mean, this is something I was playing. It's something I had played. Yeah. Nobody's uh, playing this anymore. Clearly not as much as others. Uh, and that is stadia, which interestingly enough, recently shut down. Are uh, you playing something in a minute or. 
Nope. <laughs> I'm not Maybe. playing something in a minute or in an hour. So, right. yeah, Stadia recently shut down and it was interesting <laughs> because Stadia, unlike uh, a something like Xbox Game Pass, where you pay a subscription and you just have all these games, right? And you can just play them. And they're kind of like Netflix. They go away and new ones come in. And if you, if <clears throat> Xbox Game Pass shuts down, you're not really out anything because you never purchased any one of those games. Stadio is a little bit different where you paid a subscription. Uh, well, you didn't have to, but if you wanted the higher resolution and everything, uh, you paid a subscription. But um, you, you paid a subscription plus you purchased your games. Which made it interesting because there was a guy who purchased Red Dead Redemption 2, something that Mike has played, Mike has role played in. He's done a voice before. Is this is this a banner to let everybody know that like we're also inappropriate for children? Is that oh god no, god. this is the banner to tell you that Stadia is inappropriate for children <laughs> because Children shouldn't have to be that disappointed in life. Okay. I was yeah. wondering. I was waiting. But no, you're right. I definitely did role play uh, Old V. Dead role play. Old V from the Wild West. She yeah. pull her out sometime. Let her drive around, roll around, ride around, whatever. But so they got announced. They're going to shut down. Uh, and it's like J- January 23rd, I think, like everything shuts down. And so this guy tweets out and goes, uh, I've played over 6,000 hours of red dead redemption. What's going to happen to my save? Because this isn't, this is like almost 250 days of play time and red dead redemption Correct me if I'm wrong, Mike. You can actually purchase stuff with real money. Yeah, they have, uh, it's like uh, it's it's Rockstar, like so they don't have Online. shark cards, but it's something else. Yeah, like, yeah, like, like Red Dead Online. Or, yeah, yeah, it's like GTA Online, mm-hmm. where you yeah. can so you can actually put a monetary investment into this, and this guy's got 250 days worth of playtime in this, and and it's not just that. It's like there's other games that have progression that people have purchased like destiny Two, where people have had progression, earned things, gotten special armor, special weapons, uh, purchased shaders, things like that. You know, non, uh, you know, cosmetics, non game changing things. Uh, also Hitman, Hitman, where you do certain things and you gain, uh, special weapons and things like that you can use in <clears throat> scenarios again. Elder Scrolls and Online is on Stadia. Elder Scrolls Online, <laughs> a whole ass MMORPG. I think some, uh, Cyberpunk that, 2077 was too, I believe. If yeah. I remember correctly. Could you imagine losing access to your to whole Cyberpunk. MMO account? Yeah, and everything that you've built yeah. in that account. Now, granted, Google is doing things like if you purchase the hardware, they're going to refund you the hardware. They're going to refund you any of the money that you purchased games with. Uh, they're not refunding any of the subscriptions, which is fine. I mean, like, yeah, that's they're, fine. They're kind of going above and beyond with what they're refunding already. Uh, and they're really doing well there, but literally destiny, uh, the, the, um, the developers and studios behind destiny and Hitman have reached out and said, this is news to us as well we're looking into what can be done, like how you can continue playing your story on other platforms. And this is something that like the developers don't have to do. Nope. Yeah. But trying to solve for how do you move (laughs) the save game from one platform to the other? And everybody's like, Oh, well, you know, it's just bits and like, you, you know what they bought and you just put it in. But no, that's, that's not the point is when you do purchases, 
through a platform, that platform owner gets a cut. So what do you do when somebody spent three, four hundred dollars on one platform and you try to give them all those things on another platform? That's one of the things that has made some of crossplay very difficult. Yeah. I mean, this is uh it's funny because this is not something new that most people like this was not a shock to most people like oh my god Stadia is dead like duh like it's it's google like they have so many like 80 percent of the things that they invest in and do basically fail before like they even do it because they don't care like they move on so quickly and i think i think the nail in the coffin with this one which obviously <laughs> before this but i think what really kind of did it was when xbox was like hey we're gonna do game pass and you don't even have to have a console no more like you can literally just have a tv and yeah. just do game pass oh no it i think was at that way point before then it well was i know way it's before. way but i think that's a nail in the coffin right like they were already dying but it was like well that's it like we we have no reason to continue this project like it isn't but the interesting part about this was that from the reddit subreddits that i was reading on this case was that uh like even the stadia developers didn't even know this was happening like yes. they were still pushing out updates on the ui they were updating a bunch of like new things coming out they were announcing new games and like i've even seen a developer on twitter was like we had no idea like uh, my game's supposed to release next week and it's going to be on a dead platform. Like what the hell is going on? So it's, you know, it was and, very and tight. They were, counting on, um, they were counting on a number of sales through that. Yeah. Stadia employees didn't know about it. Yeah. It was really insane. And literally it was earlier this year that rumors of Stadia's demise had come out and Google was like, no, no, you know, like, no, we're, we're committed to like, you know, this platform and the unique things that you could do on this platform, which they pretty much never did. Yeah. I mean, the, Earlier this the year, whole I don't con- understand. I was talking about Stadia dying years ago. <laughs> I mean, so was <laughs> that I. Shit, I. That shit launched and I was like, wow, this is already dead. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, because there was no use case. For Google it. just didn't realize that it was dead yet before we realized it. Yeah. I mean, it's oh, well, interesting yeah. though, is like if this was 20, 30 years ago, right. When, when consoles were out, let's say even 15, 20 years ago, like, okay, it's dead, but you still have a console. You can still play games. They're not going to obviously make any more games. You're kind of just stuck with what you got. But in this case, since everything's cloud-based, like if they shut down the servers, that's it. Like you can't it's, play. It's done. Like, well, that's a thing though, right? And it sucks. But I'm sure that in the terms of service it specifically indicates that you accept oh, for sure. that that's going to happen. It's kind of like um, EA has been in the news lately for similar shit. People are just losing access to their digital licensing. And then EA supports like, oh, yeah, some of our digital licensing actually has a set expiration date and it expired. And people are like, OK, but I still want to play the game. And they're like, well, then you just have to rebuy it and you'll have access to your old content. Like, but I already bought it once. Like, yeah, but you bought it five years ago. I was like, what does that even mean? What? <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's technically you have to repurchase it now. Like, it's just stupid. But you accepted it by agreeing to the terms of service. Just none of us read that. Yeah. And if I well, lost six thousand hours of anything, though, yeah, it, I, 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 I'd I'd commit arson. Well, what's you funny of is all people 100%. understand this more than others. I do. Yeah, yeah. I I lost Oops. hundreds of hours of Outriders and. And again, I commit. I mean, I did not commit arson. I didn't burn anything ground. We're well, what's funny is that I read some of this, like, the like comments. Pretended like, litigation like, means oh, nothing. This guy was six thousand hours. Like, poor guy. Talk to us, like, yeah. real MMO people, like, with like, like, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of hours on, on a game. Well, again, like, I no, guess six thousand hours. That they would understand it. It's a lot of time. That you know, it suddenly you know, gets shut down. You know. You know, I, some of the most hardcore ESO players I know are sitting around 6,000 hours of playtime or less. 6,000 hours is is like it's World of Warcraft since the dawn of its release playing through all content kind of <laughs> yeah. time. Like this guy no, has I spent the like, money. Like, I wouldn't care a, about the yeah, money. I could have spent two grand <laughs> on that game. And if they took 6,000 hours of my life away, I would lose my shit. I wouldn't even yeah. think about the two grand. I'd be like, yo, that was 251 days of my life. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the, the other thing yeah, about it, too, is you do that? all of this that we're talking about, uh, and Mike even said, is, you know, even even five years ago, you had a console. You still had the discs. Yeah. Um, in many cases, you couldn't buy it on the store anymore, but you could still download it and play it. I think it was 
PS3? But this is was that like the first one that was really kind of like had to be online? I want to say no, PS3. It was, PS4. It was like I thought it was PS3. You had to no, be online? I, no, I think you're right. PS4 because I had a PS3 and I still be able to, I was able to play CD <clears> games like DVD or whatever. But I don't think there's ever been one that you have these... to be online. Well, yeah, I guess I... all of these are I mean, still even mine. I don't have to be online. Yeah. yeah, all of these if, are if still console centric type items, though, whereas the it, which is why Google Stadia by itself always was doomed to fail mm-hmm. because you, you you couldn't you had to buy the games. You couldn't play with the games with anyone but those that were also on Stadia. So it wasn't cross play and it gave you no benefits of a console, but all the detriments of the console. The whole concept that they came up with of why it was important was it's in the cloud and because it's in the cloud, you could do things like your friend go, Oh, I'm having trouble getting past this part. And you can say, Oh really show me. And you could see exactly what they're seeing. Or you, if you had the game as well, in theory could pick up from their save point and say, Oh, here, let me show you I'll I'll run it. And then you can try to emulate it. And like, these are things that you at the time that stadia was launching couldn't do with a regular console that you needed the cloud for, uh, or even like persistent worlds and damage in worlds where you'd have a big city and you'd have a super, you know, villain versus super hero fight. And someone knocks down this building and in everyone's vision, it was not a knockdown building. And some MMOs try to do stuff like that, especially with instances and stuff like that but you really needed like the cloud environment to be able to do something like that. And that's why Google even had its own studios, which are now shutting down because they never were able to come out with that, that system seller, as we would say in the console worlds, right. For as to why you should buy stadia. So like Demir and said, it was, it was dead from the outset because all of us saw this and said, if you really love games, you already have a console or a PC, so you have no need of this. Yeah. If you didn't have the console and PC, you probably didn't want Stadia in the first place. So who is this even for, uh, especially when you take out any of the coolness of the cloud? Yeah. Yep. But, the, the, but they are going to be refunding <clears throat> everybody for... A, a, their equipment in for some of their games, right? Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Which means I will get zero. Yeah. Cause well, that's, that's because I didn't buy any games. Mm-hmm. Um, I only did the games that came with my, uh, you know, pro, uh, pro subscription. And I actually got the hardware for free. Right. Okay. Because it came free with the, like my phone or something. Yeah. I remember yep. that. Yeah. My phone that's, or my internet or something. They're yeah. like, Hey, get it. Get a, Dude, I was, I was like, hey, I have a podcast and I'm going to free Stadia and I'm going to try this out and tell the audience at home about this so that they don't have to spend money on this. Uh, so now, they don't have to, to be, be refunded fair, in the future. <laughs> yeah. To, to, to be fair, it did the job of what it was supposed to quite well. I mean, it played nicely, but there just wasn't a good use case. Hmm. about you, Kelly? What you been playing? So somebody was kind enough to gift my children Mario Party on Nintendo DS, the well, newest version of on Mario Nintendo Party. Nintendo DS? I'm not Nintendo uh, Nintendo Switch. Who hates you? <laughs> oh my god. Uh I Mike Mike hates me. Mike is the one who hates it was me. me. I'm sorry. That's yeah. that's how you sure. destroy friendships and ruin families. It's like <laughs> no. playing Monopoly. Have you played Mario Party on Switch? Yeah. It is nothing like the OG Mario part. Anyway, go ahead, Kelly. Well, I don't want to get I, into I, that yet. <laughs> I will say my girls keep saying, it's but worse. mommy keeps winning. But mommy keeps winning. First of all, I'm not going to like just let you win. Yeah. Like, no, that's, <laughs> right. Why would I teach him a lesson? Why would I do that? Like, let's play chess and I'll let you win. No, Can never. Can we put up that no. child warning again real quick? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's not so, the one. That one there with the flipping of the uh, yeah. the meat. Oh, my God. I am so You're, fucking great at that. I would imagine that you are I, good at flipping uh, the meat. 
I, <laughs> oh <my> yes. God. <laughs> uh, so my husband still has not played this game with us, but I, I've been, he's used been to the, flipping the meat good though. Yeah. He's, uh, he, he knows how good I am at it. Uh, he's dancing. This is the, this is the other part of Mario party. The, the, it's like the dance dance revolution part of it. Like, Oh, um, I'm not so good at the marching. That's, that's no bueno, but we did play. And apparently have a very wide swing when I no one am... plays baseball like that. Did you see that guy? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, Bowser, was... he, I've, I've never seen him actually play baseball. So yeah. So, anyway, uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun for us actually, because we were able to walk around, play some new games. I get when we are there's the the river rafting, and I'm like, no, like stop rowing. You're 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 rowing us straight into a, a, an island. Like no, so that's it's been have an have adventure. Balance seven rowing year olds. on each side. Yeah, Two I guess really right. I guess it is yes. kind of like me giving them monopoly. <laughs> yeah, 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 no, but but I I will say no, it has been no, it has been fantastic. Yeah, for, you're right. It's yeah, worse because Monopoly when, you can hide. <laughs> no, Monopoly they'll never freaking finish, so that's fine. Yeah, me too. It, yeah, but I I did say it, it, like the other day I was not feeling well, and I was like, "Girls, I've got laundry to do. I feel like garbage. I need if you want to play this, you're gonna play it." I'm not playing it with you. And they're like, okay, that's fine. I was like, no, I don't think you understand. Like, I'm not going to give you, if you play this other part of the game, any of the mini games that I don't know, I I can't help you. And they're like, okay. And they, they figured it out. They figured stuff out on their own. And as seven-year-olds together play, and they're like, oh my God, this one's so much fun. And so I, it, it has been really fun seeing them get used to the use of the controllers because this is the first controller game aside from my Nintendo classic mini <laughs> you know, yeah. where they've been playing just a couple of like literally like just two dimensional games. They have well, been loving it and I've, I've enjoyed it too. I'm glad that you enjoy it. Them. I actually mm -hmm. had a conversation with day drinker today. Cause I said, <laughs> was I there yesterday, but I was like, I hope you appreciate yeah. this game because it's very like everybody gets a participation trophy yeah. like this. It's been dumbed down like the original like Mario Party on 64 it was so cutthroat, like not to mention I'd have like a, a like a piece of skin missing from the controller of trying to yes. do throw Bowser off the fucking thing. <laughs> um, but like it was so cutthroat, like you literally would end friendships like it was very much like Monopoly. And then this the newer games, that's why I said it was perfect for your kids, because like mm. Like it's it's definitely everyone wins. It, it feels you know like even if you lose, you still kind of win. But like the old ones yeah. were like cut through. Like that's that was it. But well, yeah, if you ask it. the day drinker ATL twins, only mommy wins in WTF. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So, uh, Bruno, what do you got? You said you had to, something to talk about. I played grounded. Finally, I played it like initially when it had like its like early access thing, and then I didn't touch it anymore. Um, Grounded is a survival horror game um, to some degree, um, <clears throat> and the story kind of resembles the Honey I Shrunk the Kids story from the nineteen eighty nine movie. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. Honey, I think it was honey, night. we shrunk Ooh. the kids. I think. Yeah, honey, no, it's a, I shrunk the kids. Was first. I shrunk the kids, and then yeah. honey, we shrunk the kids. Is the second yeah. one. Yeah, 1989. You're right. We shrunk ourselves. Or honey, we shrunk ourselves. Yep. Yeah. So uh, you play as one of the one of four kids who have been mysteriously shrunk down to tiny size, and you are t set to survive. Spider warning. In a. Uh, a garden is what the entire thing is labeled as, but it's essentially just a backyard. Um, and uh, yeah, the game is actually really awesome. Um, if you have arachnophobia, uh, there is a mode for you, but uh, but don't play it. It's probably not. It, 
it's it's kind of weird. Like all it does is like each level removes like the limbs, removes like like another set and to the point where it's just a floating well, ball of a head, but it's still the spider it's, head. It's got this. It's got this. Instead of an uncanny valley, it's got this uncanny peak. Like you're like, oh, arachnophobia. Okay, it's getting a little better because we're moving. And then all of a sudden, oh my god, what is this disgusting blob thing with the spider face that's attacking me? And it's extremely freaking creepy. And then it gets yeah. to like just this <clears throat> the game. Blob. Yeah, the game has a little bit of everything in it. The story so far is it's like great. Seven levels. Um, the story so far is great. There's a decent amount of mob variety now. Um, the base building is enjoyable. Survival mechanics are enjoyable. Uh, the itemization system is really cool. Um, exploration is awesome. The map is honestly massive. It's, it's a huge, huge map for something that isn't procedurally generated. Um, and has a stupid amount of detail. Like, I I don't think I've, I, I don't think I can name a survival game off the top of my head that has as much attention to detail in it. Wow. as this game does i can't think of one the rest oh. of them are just more generic like i think like daisy i can even try and throw in tarkov i can throw in uh valheim or you know a, a lot of those games well, like you the said forest. non-procedurally generated too is the other thing yeah so, like valheim's so, like, out of that and just like well that's the thing though is valheim i don't think valheim to some degree is limited in its procedural generation because they have it set so that it generates specific areas that are supposed to follow certain biome sets. Right. So like it has some pretty intense constraints on it, but yeah, like it just like, there's so much packed into it that you can tell that somebody thought out everything they did. Like there's like, like some spoilery ish stuff. There's like an area in one spot that has like this tombstone for a hamster and like the hamster's grave is nearby, but now it's inhabited by like a giant spider and there's like bones there. So like there's just like a lot of little areas like that where they added in this stuff and they're all marked as areas that you can find um, that just have like a, some sort of a story to tell. The whole game is just really well flushed out. Um, it has from a non-story or environment perspective, it definitely has some bugs. Um, no. <laughs> spiders too. <laughs> see what you did there um but uh they're working on it they released the first patch a week after its official release and that fixed a ton of bugs in the game um but yeah like a ton of bugs (laughs) killed a ton of bugs uh i am 40 ish hours plus in wow okay off the new save or or is that off the new save that's like uh yeah so i've played a lot it's like a second job right now. I've been staying up a stupid amount. Like, I, I think the earliest I've gone to bed since that game came out is three o'clock in the morning, and the latest. Oh my god, was seven forty-five. Bruno, nah. you need to go to bed. I, I'm going to mom you right now. Not okay. It's, it's not it's okay. Just, that's what happens when I get my hands on something that I like. So, like, our base is enormous, uh, and we have. So much stuff, but we're trying to only progress the story as a group um, of, of the same four people that we started the save file with. So, like, we're super early on in the story, but we have a ridiculous amount of stuff already unlocked. But then, like, certain things are locked behind the story. So, like, we have resources for a lot of stuff, but we can't crash it. But it has everything. That game has so much stuff. It is legitimately one of my favorite survival games of all time. If not, like, it's definitely top three. Oh, wow. so it, like it, may, it may it may very well huge depending on how this story ends it may it may end as my favorite survival game of all time and they've already shown some of the roadmap and they look like they have absolutely no intentions of stopping so it sounds oh, like wow. you're playing multiplayer yeah, yeah. I, I remember when we played multiplayer and it was pretty impressive and pretty smooth yeah it's been great they, the new update today actually added some stability because we had some issues with people being like, this game is really laggy at times. Um, and it got worse the bigger I made our base. And now our base is a like seven story tall, like wooden skyscraper pretty much. Um, it's on top of built on top of a baseball for defense with a giant palisade fencing all around it with spikes and turrets on it. And then like, 
I have zip lines that lead to every part of the map that people can jump on instead of walking anywhere. So like at this point, the whole thing is like just very, very large. <laughs> so seven stories tall on top of a baseball. That's like what, like six inches. Yes. Okay. But in tiny people terms, when you're shrunk down to the size of like a mite, like Kelly, uh, it's very you large. Missed your opportunity. I was, you know, I heard you were gonna say a mic, <laughs> but that's fine. That's a bit, play was might and mic are very sound. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's close. Swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. <laughs> I like it. I like. Well, it. Well, you know what, Mike? Fuck you for ruining that. You're grounded. <laughs> oh my god. So. As far as me, I haven't played much. Uh, literally, New World has been the thing I have been playing when I have had time to play. Um, and all I wanted to mention was that if you are interested in a New World, there's a new uh, update coming out. It's called Brimstone Sands, and it released on October 18th. Um, this is actually going to include uh, a new weapon along with a rehaul of like levels 1 through 25 for starting players. Um, they're going to actually add in like King Arthur's quests, like a lot of like missions and quests towards that. So um, if you played it in the past and you want to come back to it, this is a good time to do that. Currently right now they're doing like uh, 1.5 XP. Uh, so to help level up your character to get to 60, uh, once you get to 60, the new, uh, the new area Brimstone Sands is, is geared towards 60 above. So um, not a place you want to kind of roll into under spec, but, uh, but that's, it's, you know, helping out those players who've been playing for a long time. Um, as Bruno has mentioned before, this is not a, a really an end game update. So like if you are already 16, you're already kind of grinded and you kind of hit the cap on that. This isn't really going to do a lot for you um, outside of the new, you know, new environment and, and new things to do. Um, but the end game is still basically the same grind that it's been in the past. So take that with a grain of salt with, you know, depending on the type of gameplay you do. Um, I'm excited because I'm almost 60. I'm like at 55. Uh, this is probably the first MMO I've ever, well, for one of the first I've ever played and also one of the first that I've actually tried to get to the end game content. So that's kind of where I'm at. Um, but I'm not there yet. So hopefully I'll make it to the 60. We'll see if I, if I quit on the game before. <laughs> but, uh, but that's basically new world. So new, the great swords coming out, the great sword, the great sword, master, the great sword. I mean, you, you can't quit now, Mike, you're almost there for your age. I know I have to. So. So that basically sums up uh, our games. Uh, usually we kind of roll into the ending on this, but I want to mention one thing before we do that um, is emails. So we actually got an email. I don't know if you guys knew that, but we did. I don't. Uh, I, I, so I like this to is, be surprised. So this is, uh, I believe her, I believe the name is Lila. I'm sorry if I murdered that. If it's something different, you can let me know. Um, from Arkansas, but basically uh, she's responding to Phoenix's comment about Dragon Con, and we were talking mm -hmm. about the Dragon Con app, and uh, it I'll says, draw. hi, regarding the Dragon Con app, you can actually filter by track, there is a button on it for that. Uh, enjoyed the podcast, and I was also there, thanks. And uh, I went back and forth a couple times, and she uh, said, uh, you're very, I'm um, sorry, uh, what was that? Yeah, basically if you fool around with the app, there's other there's things, so that's Basically yeah, to you, I'm, Brian, because you know that was I'm a complaint sad that you I had, missed it's that yeah. in the app. Because uh, yeah, I, uh, that's exactly what I was looking for, and that was pretty awesome. Because uh, that would have helped find a lot more things. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. some things would still be hidden because sometimes they have panels that don't fit into a track very well. Yeah. Um, there was like a, there was like a a creator's meet and greet that was put under the anime track. Hmm. So that would still be a little bit difficult to find that particular one. Although we did, we stumbled across it. Uh, but yeah, having, uh, I'm glad that's in there. I'm sorry that I missed that. Cause that would have made my life a lot simpler. And yeah. thank you so, for the email. Lila. Yeah. Shout out yeah. to you. Thanks, Lila. For, listening Thanks for writing. Too. Um, yeah, and yeah. if you guys want to write us too, if you're listening or watching, you can check us out at GOA at sasgaming.com uh, top right over there. It's over there somewhere. I can't point, but uh, GOA at sasgaming.com. Send us an email. Let us know how you feel, what we talked about, whatever. Uh, tell us the weather in your location or whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, second part of this is shameless plug again. Shocktober starting tonight. Please 
join us on the stream. We would love to see you. Love oh, to have you. Any donation is do. completely welcome, whether you can or cannot totally fine. Um, just be there for the party. And we're going to do this every Friday of this month until the finale on the 28th, I believe is the Friday. Yeah. Um, which again, we have a special announcement for that coming soon. We will talk about that and publish you know, all over social media and stuff. Let's just say it's going to be fun. So come hang out. Um, on that, that is what got our attention this week. Thanks for joining us. Um, if you did like this video, make sure to click the like button. If you want to click the subscribe, do that. Click the bell if you want to see that we have new content. We do appreciate that. If you're listening, uh, make sure to tell your friends. You know, put it on social media. Tell your friends at work, or you know, stick a, pod, a little ear pod in their ear and make them listen to us. And if they hate you for that, I'm sorry. Do, uh, do that's not, fine. Do you not stick your pods in your friends' ear. Your- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's like not recommended. No. I mean, you know, there's a lot of things not recommended. Uh, sasgaming.com uh, check out our patreon patreon.com slash sasgaming uh, you know so forth so on there's so many different details we can give you but on that point that is it so love you fam you guys take care out there until next time we'll uh, see you later take you out in shocktober hopefully peace Hi.